All right, in this tutorial, I'm just going to show you how to, uh, once you've got the bus drawn, how to work with the fact that it's not a one-to-one -one scale. So one of the things that we'll need to do, you'll notice that the border is extremely small here. We need to scale it up. So to do that, we're going to use the scale command. I can go up to modify and look for the scale command, or I can type in SC. And at the bottom, it asks me to select objects, so I'm going to select the entire border. Again, remember that we are always going to leave the objects at one-to-one. -one. So the bus is going to be drawn to its true dimensions. What we're going to do is we're going to scale up the border to fit around it. So I've selected the border, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Enter to finish selecting objects, and it asks me for a base point. That's just the point at which it's going to scale around. So if I scale, if I click here, then the border is going to scale out this way. If I was to click here, it's going to scale out this way. It doesn't really matter, but I wouldn't want it to scale out this way because then the border is going to be intermixed with the, the bus. So I'm just going to click on this point here. Then it asks me to specify the scale factor. So now I type in the, the factor or the multiplier. And since this is a 1 to 10 scale drawing, then the multiplier is 10. So I type in 10. And again, it's asking for the factor, not the scale. So I just type in 10, not 1 colon 10. So now I've got my border. And now the bus will fit into uh, this border. Next thing we need to do is to make it so that our dimensions show up correctly. So we need to go up to dimension, go down to dimension style, and say modify. And here, notice that when it's set to 1, that the dimensions are barely legible. You, you, it, this would not come out uh, very good on a drawing. So I go to dimension, dimension style, modify, and I change. This is the only thing I have to change. It's in the fit tab. So you should always leave uh, your uh, dimension style left on the fit tab. Other things have already been set up for you. The text height I'm gonna put in here is 2.5. Uh, the arrow size the lines, uh, the primary units. You don't need to change any of these because I've already set these up for you. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll put that back to two if that's what if that's what uh, yours is set up as. And then I'll say OK. And then I can say close. Oops. And now, because on this one, uh, the, the file had another uh, dimension style, I'll need to go to dimension, update, and select all the ones there. You shouldn't. Uh, What I'll need to do is just check and see which one is being set current. So I'm just going to say modify again. Go back to the fit tab. Make sure that I set the uh, scale here. Again, I'm putting in the scale factor 10. Say OK. And close. And then I need to do the dimension update only because there's two dimension styles there. You wouldn't normally need to do that. OK. If there's only one dimension style, it'll update automatically. So now I've got the dimensions uh, looking proper, the arrow sizes and the text size and so on, that putting in the 10 in the dimension style doesn't change the actual dimension. The dimension said 1200 here before as well. What it did was change the size of the text, the size of the uh, arrowhead, the size of the gap in here, and so on. Any of the settings that I put in, it's just multiplied those by 10. But the dimension text, the, what it actually says, doesn't change. Okay? So now, the, the next thing you need to do, this one is pretty much completely dimensioned. Uh, the only thing we need to do is make sure that the spacing is correct. So uh, the spacing between the outer point on the object to the dimension line should be uh, 10 times the scale factor. So since our scale factor is 10, it should now be 100. So this distance from here to here should be 100. Notice that the dimensions are placed from the outermost point on the object. So from here to here is 100 rather than from here to here. Okay, That way things line up nicely. So these ones have all been done correctly. I need to do the bottom. So the dimension should be placed from the outermost point, which would be the bottom of the wheels. And I don't have anything there, so I'm going to start the line command. I'm just going to draw a line for now. Then I'm going to offset that line. 
by the amount, 100, since it was 10 times the scale factor, which is 10. So 10 times 10 is 100. Now I'm going to offset. Offset. If I had done these ones already, then I would just offset and offset, and I would place those in correct in uh, in the appropriate place as well. Once I know the location, now I can just click on the uh, grip of the dimension and place it. And I can do the same thing with this one. Grab the grip, and I can place it. Oops, I'm going to undo that one. I can pull this one up here. It's actually grabbing the wrong portion there. I really want, sorry, I want this. Uh, I, I should have zoomed in more. So I want it to line up there. So I need to click the grip that was close to the arrowhead, not the end of the extension line. And here, I'll grab the end of that one and line it up as well. And then I need to change this one. So again, I just grab the grip and bring it to so that it's in line there. And then I can get rid of all these other lines that I don't need. So I'm going to get rid of these three lines. And I'm going to do a window around these ones to select those two lines. And now I've got everything uh, based correctly. So this is 10 times uh, the scale factor, so 100 away from, from the bottom of the wheel down to here. This is another 100. This is 100 out, and so on. And it's all out from the outermost point of the object. That way everything lines up nicely. It looks nice and neat, and it looks professional. The other thing we need to do is to put in the center lines for the wheels. Center line should not... Uh, start or end at an object. So this is done correctly here. Notice that the center line goes past the arc and it stops short here. That way, when this prints out, someone can tell that this long dash short dash line is not part of the object. Uh, if it started at the object, if it started here and started there, it would look like it was part of the object. So we always make it so that it, that it does not start or end at one of the objects. To put in the line, I'll put this one in again. What I can do is go up, change to the center line layer, and then I just need to draw a line. I'm going to go to uh, the center here, which is where I want the center line to, to be located. I'm going to make it a little bit longer. Now I can click on the line and I can take the middle grip and put it down at the center. Now I know that it's centered. Uh, that would be okay like that. Uh, it's not starting or ending at an object, but if I wanted to, I could also extend it up past here and then recenter it. Okay, and maybe I, uh, maybe I want to take it just a little bit longer. The one thing you want to do as far as your dimensioning is you dimension to the end of the center line. If I was to dimension to the center of the circle, which seems like it would be appropriate, now the uh, extension line overlaps the center line, and we won't see the long dash, short dash here anymore. And it'll just look like a solid line. So instead, I bring the grip back out here to the end of the center line. And that way I'll have this little gap in here which tells somebody that this is an extension line rather than part of the object or part of the center line. Then I need to go ahead and center this. So I would do the same as I've done previously. I want to uh, center the smallest rectangle that'll fit around the object. And to do that, I've already got one corner up here of the smallest rectangle that would fit around the object, so I need to create another corner. So I'll just do that temporarily. And I just make it longer than I need so that I know that I'll, be, uh, that I'll remember to delete it later. And then I can draw a line diagonal in here. And then I need another line diagonal. Notice that right now I've got ortho on, however the O snaps override the ortho.